Hello everybody and um, welcome to a little special bit on YouTube regarding last night's television program. Uh, it was a pleasure to sit in the shade uh, last night after the bloody sunshine. Look at me, I look like a tomato. And I sat with an ex-military friend of mine and a civilian friend of mine like me and, uh, and we watched that dreadful BBC program Panorama. E even the title, SAS Death Squad. So who gave them the right to say that? This is all speculation. Whoever the reporter was on there, the presenter, if you like, he was just so determined to believe anybody that said anything without any corroboration, without any evidence. And now people are calling for an investigation. Well, uh, as far as I know, there's been two investigations into what happened in Afghanistan regarding uh, these allegations that are made by uh, various human rights lawyers the Mr. Shiners of this world. He's been struck off, I believe. Anyway, last night's program uh, was, I think, appalling. <clears throat> First of all, it was mainly focused on the Australian SAS, which are different to our SAS. And of course, our SAS, as uh, Admiral Chris Parry said last night on Newsnight, are not guilty by association. He rightly said that the SAS are a bright bunch and they really, really got their eye on whatever they do, uh, what reverberations that will cause back in, in our country. <clears> that <throat> They are a professional bunch of people uh, and to have death squads is absolutely ridiculous. And of course, they're a secret organisation, which is difficult. They don't exactly go around with the camera filming everything and putting it on YouTube, like some. So, so how can this BBC panorama, without any evidence at all, say, in documents that we have picked up, in a, uh, a diary that has been made to us, we have obtained stuff like, how can you steal something from the SAS? It's just lies, 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 lies. But here's the thing, how can the BBC, the British broadcasting company have an awful little reporter walking through Afghanistan where we lost, we lost over 400 people dead. How about that? He's talking about 29 Taliban people. It's not a numbers game here. Of course it isn't. The rules are the rules. But he is allegating that the British SAS broke the rules and he's using Australian SAS uh, uh, to, to have had their own inquiry to say we are guilty by association. We must be doing the same thing. You idiot bloke, I've never been so outraged and angry all my life. This is not sunburn, this is my blood pressure going through the roof. It was awful. And then, of course, it, just look at the Australian thing. You had some bloke on there. These are the titles. Some geezer gobbing off uh, a lawyer, and it said, Special Forces Lawyer. What does that mean? That he works for the Special Forces and he's decided to be a whistleblower? No, he's a prosecutor that's taken on the Special Forces. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, <laughs> Another guy on there with long hair who said he was a, a signaller with the SAS. You know what that means? He carries a radio and he doesn't go anywhere. He's a signaller. He's not part of the SAS. And, and, and I don't even think he's real because I don't think a real person would go on and do that, especially without having your face all crimpled up because these SAS men have got long memories. Do you know, our, our, our people, our SAS guys, will be horrified at, at this. They said there's no new evidence uh, whatsoever. Uh, and Chris, uh, Chris Parry uh, said pretty much the same. If there is another inquiry, I'm sure the SAS will welcome it, but it's a waste of time because the inquiry has already been done. Let's have an inquiry about all the British dead that are out there killed by these Taliban who are taxi drivers one minute and terrorists the next. So how do you differentiate? It's absolutely crazy. And regarding that long-haired idiot from the SAS signals, in Australia. Old Phil Champion, my mate, old Big Phil, you know, he said he's probably got no further than gobbing off in the naffy about all his exploits. It, there's a lot of that going on. But it was just so sad that this reporter referred to the British as if he comes from another planet. Well, he does. He comes from planet woke and he bloody well can go and stay there. How dare he? How dare he go and do that? And how dare the BBC show it? Let's do something about the BBC. I plod on about Ustream, but my God, you know, my television station is worth a thousand lefty BBCs, and I firmly believe that. And, and you're the ones that support it. So, you know, thank you for that very much. In fact, you want to show your support and your distrust for the, the BBC, send me five quid to the Ustream Veterans Fund, okay? And I'll tell you what I'll do. All these ones that come in, I'll give it to the SAS Clock Tower Fund. Will that do us? 
And why don't our MPs, instead of all now, it's like Love Island, isn't it? Westminster Love Island all going on. Um, they should sort it all out. Now, talking of MPs, my money was behind Penny Morden. She's a, a naval reservist. She's quite nice. She's very bright. And she put that gobby gingerbread in her place a few times, which I love. But I have to tell you now, uh, she's saying she doesn't can't describe what a woman is. Here we go, more woke nonsense, you know, go woke, go broke. And now she's having a go at Jimmy Croft and Chris Perry, uh, of Perry and Croft, for writing old programs like Dad's Army, Hide the High. It ain't half up, Mum. She described that as racist, homophobic, colonialism, bullying, transvestmentism. She's described that as awful. You're not going to get my vote, Penny. You're not. And I urge other people that are watching this to have a real serious look at you. And if you've got any guts or any balls or you think I'm making a false allegation, I'm not making a false allegation. We've got the quotes what you've made, Penny. You really, really have disappointed me. Two disappointments in one day. The bloody BBC and now my favourite to become Prime Minister. She's now proved to be just another woke person should I say I won't say woman because in case you don't know who you are Penny shame on you let's have a look at another woman contestant that I quite fancy I'm not gonna fly my flag just yet but I've got my eyes on this little person who I think oh she's a woman she's admitted being a woman and it might surprise you but I think she is the best in the pack <sighs> anyway there's more problems going on I watched Ustream uh, this morning, uh, last night's show, and uh, Jake, who, who works for me, stood in for me while I was stuck down here and we couldn't get the wee transfer working. Um, he was brilliant. So that's about I'm coming back here. Then Thursday, I'm doing one myself. Jake, you're not doing any more. Okay, folks, um, what can I tell you? Have a look at the last episodes. We're running out now. We're coming to the end of the series of Left, Right and Centre. You, I think you'll really, really enjoy that. And there's no woke on Ustream, and there never will be any woke on Ustream. Doesn't mean to say we're bad guys, we're just not woke. No snowflakes, no woke, no problem. Sign up. Hello and welcome to another Left, Right and Centre. I'm Miles Crawford and I have two panels that are joining me on the show today. Uh, what's it about? You ask yourselves, well, it's a bit like question time, but with fun, excitement, and sheer enjoyment all the way. Putin, you know, <laughs> with his top off on that horse, yeah. going, oh no, we can't have no gays coming in this country. No, we can't have that. But he's definitely gay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you mean. I'm riding this horse with no shelter. I'm swimming. I'm fishing with no shelter. I'm doing all the archery with no shelter. What do you mean I'm gay? Yeah. I love martial arts films, and uh, my, my favourite martial arts one recently was the one with uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can anyone on the panel speak any languages? I speak um, Cantonese. I got raised by uh, Chinese Malaysian nannies. Are you a Chisin Chai Hoya Pindawa? Thai legacy fat tang chua. And the waitresses look at me like, what? Because I've just said, where are you going, crazy boy? Come back or I'll smack your bottom with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to show off what you know. <laughs> I'm saying to my wife, uh, mein lieb, mein lieb, mein Schweine mit Unterhosen. My, my swine, my swine, my pig in knickers. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>